Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urges united effort of teachers and guardians for saving children from ignorance. Red carpet rolled out at airport as Vietnamese President Tran Dai Quang arrives in Dhaka on three-day state visit. Next general election will be for building non-communal Bangladesh in spirit of liberation war, says Awami League General Secretary. Government firm on zero tolerance policy as weakened militants still active, says Information Minister. Turkey carries out repeated airstrikes in Syria's Afrin, killing 36 pro-Assad government troops. And Bangladesh cricket team reached Sri Lanka to take part in Nita's Tri-Nation T20 Trophy. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to News at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chittagong Center. I am Roya Zabin. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Shongita Ahmed. You've just heard the headlines and now on to the rest of the news. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has called for saving the children from ignorance, urging the guardians and teachers to work together to make them aware of this. The Prime Minister made the call while distributing Bongabundu Fellowship National Science and Technology Fellowship and Special Donation for Research among postgraduate students studying at different institutions at home and abroad at Osmani Memorial Hall in the capital today. Referring to the attack of eminent teacher and writer Dr. Muhammad Zafar Iqbal, the Prime Minister said the nature of attack made it clear who are the attackers. She said a man through killing an innocent person can never go to heaven. Altogether, we have to work to keep our children free from such ignorance. Everybody should do everything required for this, she added. The Prime Minister said Bangladesh needs to build its human resources to carry forward the country's development in every sphere. So the government has attached utmost importance to science and technological research. Quoting Bongabundhu, she said there is no better investment than spending on education sector to build a society. After independence, Bongabundu had taken steps to put his thoughts into real shape. But his dream was destroyed with his death in 1975, she said. Bangladesh needs huge, efficient manpower for Rupur nuclear power plant, tapping sea resources and dealing with the matters of operation of the Bongabundu satellite, which would be launched very soon, she said. Bangladesh received a UNESCO award and with the amount of prize the Awami League government had introduced a scholarship for students in higher studies. Minister for Science and Technology Yafiz Usman was in the chair. Chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on the Ministry of Science and Technology Dr. AFM Ruhul Haq was present as special guest while Secretary of the Ministry Mohammad Anwar Hussain gave the welcome address. A total of 116 students received the Bongabundu Fellowship this year, while 2,358 students were awarded the NST Fellowship. A total of 141 research projects were given special donation. Four recipients of Bongabundu Fellowship, 16 recipients of NST Fellowship and special research donation received checks from the Prime Minister. Vietnam President Tran Di Quang with his wife arrived in Dhaka today on a three-day state visit to Bangladesh at the invitation of President Mohammad Abdul Hamid. A special flight of Vietnam Airlines carrying the Vietnam President landed at Hazrat Shah Jalal International Airport this afternoon. A 21-gun salute heralded his arrival as he stepped down from the flight. President Mohammad Abdul Hamid, along with his wife Rashida Khanum, received Vietnam President Tran Di Quang and First Lady Nguyen Thi Hien at the VVIP terminal of the airport. Two tiny tots also presented bouquets. The Vietnam President was given a red carpet reception at the airport.
Later, a contingent of Army, Navy and Air Force presented state salute. The Vietnam president took the salute along with his Bangladesh counterpart and inspected the guard. At the presentation line, senior ministry, ministers and high civil and military officials were introduced to Vietnam President Tran Di Quan by President Mohammed Abdul Hamid. Vietnam has expressed keen interest to expand existing bilateral cooperation in different sectors, including commerce, investment, agriculture, and culture with Bangladesh. Visiting Vietnamese President Tran Di Quan expressed this when Foreign Minister Abul Hassan Mahmoud Ali made a courtesy call on him at his hotel suite this afternoon. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Vietnam, Pham Binh Min, Ambassador to Bangladesh, Tran Ban Khoya, Foreign Secretary Shahidul Haq, and Bangladesh Ambassador to Vietnam, Shamima Naz, among others, were present on the occasion. Abul Hassan Mahmoud Ali sought cooperation from Vietnam President to introduce direct air communication between the two countries and support for getting Bangladesh's membership of ASEAN. Awami League General Secretary Obadul Kader has said the next general election will be held against the communal forces to build a non-communal Bangladesh in the spirit of liberation war. He told this to newsmen today after visiting the Sorawardi Uddan venue of Awami League Grand Sorawardi Uddan venue of Awami League Grand Rally on 7th March commemorating Father of the Nation's historic speech. Awami League and central leaders, leaders of associate organizations and other leaders and workers were present. Obadul Kadir said militants and communal forces are preparing to carry out powerful strikes and as such all have to be alert against them. He said all preparations are complete to hold the grand rally of Awami League on March 7, breaking records of last 42 years. Health and Family Welfare Minister Mohammad Nasim has said that the government has taken decision to appoint 10,000 doctors this year to ensure health services at the grassroots level. He also said out of them, 5,000 doctors will be appointed within next three months, while remaining 5,000 will be appointed later. The health minister said this at a press meet jointly organized by Bangladesh Health Reporters Forum and Bangladesh Medical Association, BMA, in the capital today. BMA President Dr. Mustafa Jalal Mohyuddin, General Secretary Dr. Ehta Shamul Hok Chaudhry, Bangladesh Health Reporters Forum President Taufik Maruf and General Secretary Nikhil Mankin, among others, were present on the occasion. Information Minister Hassanul Hok Inu has said the attack on Dr. Mohammad Zafar Iqbal proves that the militant and terrorist groups are still active and they are unlikely to move back. The minister came up with the remark while talking to reporters after visiting injured Professor Dr. Zafar Iqbal at the Combined Military Hospital, CMH, in the capital today. He said no one will be spared if one patronizes terrorist groups. The minister added that the people should support the government for destroying those who were involved in patronizing the militant and terrorist groups. Earlier at a press briefing, doctors of CMH said Professor Zafar Iqbal is completely out of danger now and he is fully conscious. Zafar Iqbal's wife was present along with her family members. While talking to journalists, Dr. Yasmin expressed deep satisfaction for the overall government measures, including bringing him to Combined Military Hospital in Dhaka for his better treatment. She also thanked Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina for looking after the incident in person and taking steps to bring her husband immediately to Dhaka for his better treatment. Protest rallies were held throughout the country demanding exemplary punishment of the attackers of Professor Mohammad Zafar Iqbal. In capital Dhaka, 
Shamilito Shankriti Jot organized a protest rally at the Central Shohid Minar premises. Cultural Minister Asadul Zaman Noor attended the attended the rally. In his address, he said the defeated forces of the liberation war are launching attacks at different times on nationalism and liberal thoughts in a planned manner. Presided over by poet Dr. Mohammad Samad, the function was also addressed, among others, by drama personalities Mamunur Rashid, Ramindu Majumdar, Dr. Inamul Haq, singer Fakir Alamgir, and some other eminent cultural personalities. The speakers called upon active citizens to build a social movement alongside the law enforcing agencies against all evil forces. Meanwhile, the police have found out the identity of the attacker, who is already detained. The attacker, Faizur Rahman, is a resident of Kalyapon village under Darai Upuzela in Shunamganj district. Meanwhile, in a drive, police have also arrested a relative of the alleged youth. Registrar of the Shah Jalal Science and Technology University, Ishfaqul Hussain, has filed a case. And now international news. At least 36 pro-Syrian government troops have been killed by a Turkish airstrike in the region of Afrin, a monitoring group says. The strike targeted a camp at Kafi Jinnah in the northern Syrian region. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the pro-government troops entered Afrin two weeks ago to back Kurdish forces. They are fighting a Turkish military offensive that was launched to clear Kurdish groups from Afrin. Turkey considers the Kurdish militiamen their terrorists. The Syrian government has denounced the offensive as a blatant attack on its sovereignty and according to state media, forces were sent in to support the Kurds. Voting is underway in Italy in one of the most uncertain general elections in years. The economy, unemployment and immigration have dominated public discourse throughout the campaigning season. Polls opened at 7 in the morning and are set to close at 11 in the evening, local time. Local media expected to publish early exit polls immediately afterwards. More than 46 million Italians are eligible to vote. It could take some time before final results are announced, however, as none of the parties are expected to win the 40% needed to form a majority government. The level was introduced in a new law last year. Back to national news. Information Minister Hassanul Haq Inu has said all preparations will be completed within September to implement the Ninth Wage Board Award. He told this to journalists after a meeting with stakeholders of Ninth Wage Board at the Press Institute of Bangladesh, BIB, in Dhaka today. Chairman of Ninth Wage Board, Justice Nizamul Haq, presided over the meeting. Among others, media advisor to Prime Minister Iqbal Subhan Chaudhry, Secretary in Charge of Information Ministry Nasiruddin Ahmed, mm -hmm. Director General of BIP Shah Alamgir, including owners and editors of daily newspapers and leaders of Workers and Journalists Association, were present. The issue of involving the electronic media in the wage board structure also came up for discussion. Indian High Commissioner Harsh Vardhan Shringla has said his country will extend support to Bangladesh to help the Rohingyas during the upcoming cyclone season. He gave this assurance when he called on Disaster Management and Relief Minister Mufazal Hussain Chaudhry Maya at the Secretariat today. During the meeting, the minister informed the Indian High Commissioner that about 25,000 Rohingya families should be shifted to cyclone resilient shelter centers as the current Rohingya camps might be damaged by storms during the forthcoming cyclone season. In view of this, he sought Indian support for building new shelter centers. The minister also sought Indian support for children, food, dry food, gumboot, fuel and raincoat, and particularly child delivery materials for 30,000 pregnant women. Harsh Vardhan Shringla responded positively and assured giving assistance for the Rohingya people. India has expressed interest to support Bangladesh in building Bagherhat's Khan Jahan Ali Khan Airport and modernizing Saidpur Airport in Nilfamari. 
This was revealed at a meeting between Indian High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Harsh Vardhan Shringla, and Civil Aviation and Tourism Minister, AKM Shah Jahan Kamal, at the Secretariat today. The Indian invoice said there are opportunities for both Bangladesh and India as friendly neighboring countries to work together for further development in aviation and tourism sector. The minister thanked the Indian envoy for the proposal and expressed his satisfaction over the excellent bilateral relation existing between the two countries. State Minister for ICT Division Junaid Ahmed Pollock has said Bangladesh will make full use of shortage of skilled worker in the IT sector of Japan. The State Minister came up with the observations while addressing a function to distribute certificates among the first batch of trainees of Bangladesh Japan ICT Engineers Training BJET program at Bangladesh Computer Council BCC Auditorium in the capital today. BCC, in association with JICA Bangladesh, organized the program. Japanese ambassador to Bangladesh, Hiro Yasu Izumi, and JICA chief representative, Takatoshi Nishikata, also addressed the function, among others. The state minister urged the Japanese ambassador and JICA official to increase the Japanese investment in the ICT sector of Bangladesh. Each course of BJET is three months long, and the first batch of 20 trainees who were selected through rigorous procedure completed the program and secured job placement in different companies in Japan. Now news on sports. A 16-member Bangladesh team led by Mahmudullah Riyadh reached Sri Lanka today to participate in the Nidahas Trophy Tri-Nation T20 Cricket Tournament. The tournament will begin on March 6 at the Primadasa Stadium in Colombo with the match between host Sri Lanka and India. All the matches will, be, will start at 7.30 p.m. Bangladesh Standard Time. Bangladesh will face India in their first match on March 8. And before we end tonight's bulletins, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urges united effort of teachers and guardians for saving children from ignorance. Red carpet rolled out at airport as Vietnamese President Tran Di Quan arrives in Dhaka on three-day state visit. Next general election will be for building non-communal Bangladesh in spirit of liberation war, says Awami League General Secretary. The government firm on zero tolerance policy as weakened militants still active, says Information Minister. Turkey carries out repeated airstrikes in Syria's Afrin, killing 36 pro-Assad government troops. And Bangladesh cricket team reached Sri Lanka to take part in Nidha's Tri-Nation T20 trophy. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us. We invite you to watch our 11.30 Banga News. Until then, Khodafis. Khodafis. Thank you.